The brain is the last private part of ourselves. Brain-computer interfaces, or BCIs. BCIs are technologies developed since the 70s and range from non-invasive that can be wearable, such as helmets or glasses, partial invasive to invasive, basically electrodes in the brain. BCIs already allow a person to control a device by a connection between their brain and a computer. This is a game changer for people with certain disabilities. Another common application is certainly video games, but considering they allow to read the brain and make the brain writing, they have limitless applications. In the realm of speculation, they could lead us to cybernetic brains having access to all of the internet's databases, mind uploading and downloading, and even telepathy. There are already a lot of interesting applications, like Neuralink, the famous project of Elon Musk. They will be used to send emails and texts purely by thought. Even Facebook had a similar project called brain to text which however has been shut down because the research simply won't lead to a product soon enough. With invasive BCIs, you can already talk just by thinking. In 2018, the MIT Media Lab used to transcribe human thoughts into type messages. And synthetic speech generated from brain recordings. And so what you have here is this ECOG. This is an invasive technology, ECOG. And the ECOG is listening to what you're thinking and then it's translating that into how you would speak. But it's essentially able to decode what you're thinking. The print that you are seeing is signed all of only books. The proof that you are seeking is not available in books. Imagine also military applications you can control drones that in a world can be used for other devices, for what is called telepresence. But there are also so many potential applications and surveillance applications already used nowadays. In China, governments is already deploying brain reading technology to detect changes in emotional states in employees on the production line, the military, and even high-speed train drivers. These devices can alert if something goes wrong. So these are going to be used worldwide. Caps that track fatigue in lorry drivers have been used on mine sites in Australia. Companies in Chile, Peru, Argentina, and Brazil are considering the use of smart cups to measure fatigue and prevent workplace injuries. But other applications are already used in Chinese classrooms, including controlling students' attention or even improved concentration. Under the umbrella term of neurotechnologies, there is also brain simulation, which delivers targeted electrical pulses to the brain and is used to treat cognitive disorders. Other techniques can also monitor the brain in real time. So they are used for deep brain simulation can both detect neural activity related to people's mood and can suppress undesirable symptoms like depression through electrical stimulation. They can therefore be used for neurological disorders. This is really important considering that nearly one in six of the world population already suffers from neurological disorders, from Alzheimer's to Parkinson. A promising approach in response to this actual global crisis is the development and deployment of cutting-edge neuroengineering devices for the treatment, rehabilitation and assistance of neurological patients. Dream hacking or targeted dream incubation, also called TDI. For example, there is already a wearable device called Dormio. It pairs three sleep sensors with a computer or smartphone to prompt users to think about a specific topic, determining that they have been asleep for a predetermined period of time the technology awakens them with a slight sound and records their verbal dream report. Stories produced by participants after sleep with incubated dreams were significantly more creative. The potential is very intriguing. Sleep likely represents a unique period during which preferences and choices that are otherwise stable can be selectively modified by external cues. Fostering creativity is just one of the potential uses for TDI techniques. They could be used with sufferers of PTSD to support sleep-dependent processing of the trauma memory and facilitate recovery. They could be developed also immersive tools designed to facilitate flying dreams or induced lucid dreaming, knowing that you're dreaming while it's still in the dream. Anyway, so far investments are for ads. Yes, receiving ads even when you sleep. There is a lack of evidence this works, but it is a national field of study, so we could expect serious improvements. Tech giants such as Amazon, Apple and Google all have developed smart devices designed to monitor people's sleep 
While these technologies and the data they collect are ostensibly geared to improve people's sleep, it is not hard to envision a world in which our phones and smart speakers, now widely present in our bedrooms, become instruments of overnight advertising or data collection. A group of more than 40 sleep and dream researchers from the scientific community recently co-signed the document rejecting dream advertising campaigns, while others have drafted a dream engineering ethic to foster discussions on the implications of this emerging field of research and the ethical consideration that should guide us. While invasive BCIs require surgery and are currently regulated under the domain of medicine, Non-invasive BCIs, which will be used for the same purposes as invasive ones, often fall outside of the medical regulation, and in most countries they are not regulated at all. It is evident the potential use for surveillance, manipulation and security risks from governments, corporations and even neurocriminals. This may literally hack the brain and abuse of the user by disrupting or terminating function in their devices without the user's permission or consent. Existing human rights treaties cannot offer the robust and comprehensive human rights protection that a newer technological world requires. In 2017, a young European bioethicist, Marcello Jenka, proposed a new class of legal rights, neural rights, the freedom to decide who is allowed to monitor, read or alter your brain. Our current notion of privacy, in fact, may be useless in the face of such deep intrusion. Devices like these may generate data from user brain activity. Where and how the data is stored is hard to track and even harder to control. Now, Chile is redrafting its constitution, dissociating it from the Pinochet surveillance regime. So legislators are using this opportunity to address the need for closer protection of people's rights from the unknown threats posed by neurotechnology. In September 2021, Chilean lawmakers approved a constitutional amendment to ensure mental integrity as a right of all citizens, includes an innovative interpretation of mental privacy, that is, the control over access to our neural data and to the information about our mental processes and states that can be obtained by analyzing it. Rather than prescribing it in broad terms, it proposes to treat neural data as a special kind of information. The bill therefore states that neural data must be legally considered as organic tissue. By treating neural data as an organ, the law prohibits Chileans from being compelled to give up brain data and, crucially, its collection will require explicit opt-in authorization. Another implication of this legal analogy is that brain data cannot be sold. It can only be donated for altruistic purposes. The buying and selling of brain data is prohibited, regardless of consent. For some, however, the law may end up being too restrictive. Our right to cognitive self-determination plausibly entails also that there should be no restriction to how we collect, analyze and apply information about these processes, including the possibility of selling it. A crucial step in moving towards an international consensus, one that could shield Chile from losing potential investors in neural rights heavens with lax regulations, is a neural rights agenda for the United Nations. No mandatory governance framework focused on brain data currently exists in supranational or international law. This is why researchers are proposing governance frameworks themselves. They are already developing useful taxonomies of brain data. They call upon professional societies, national and international organizations, as well as unrepresented or underrepresented communities and stakeholders to take up the challenge and coordinate a joint effort towards an international framework. This governance framework should be able to tackle emerging issues from inadequate to inform consent to the possibility for malicious exploitations of brain data, combining human rights, binding laws, ethics and innovation at the international level. We entered a new era, an era where intrusions inside our minds is a real threat, a new territory that capitalism, the state and malicious actors want to colonize. This is a new battlefield for human rights, probably mind reading what happened anytime soon and at least not in the way many imagine. The brain is just too complex. Despite current limitations, there is reason to believe that we are on a steady path towards full-fledged technological mind reading. Even before getting to a point where we fully understand neuroprocessing, we can already build neurotechnologies with practical applications and problematic implications. In this process, 
It is a fiduciary responsibility of experts to educate the population about what is reasonable to them. Neurotechnologies can indeed make our thoughts and emotions readable, thus profitable and manipulable. But they also have beneficial applications like curing neurological diseases and increased security of workers. And who knows what other application will emerge. This is why we need speculative ethicists. The potential for bad actors to misuse research and weaponize the technology is serious. The United Nations should eventually lead the incorporation of neuro rights into the human rights protection system. Still, we cannot forget that privacy is already broken. We are already constantly surveilled and data fight. So we need to develop neuro rights, but we cannot forget the current war on privacy.